Evolution is an amazing thing, and we always love learning about how our bodies have adapted over the years. And while most of our ancient traits have disappeared, we've still got some body features that we don't really need, but are still fully functioning. Today we're showing you 10 body features you can live without. There are a few body features you don't need, but there are a lot more that do come in handy. For example, how could you be able to watch the hub videos without clicking the buttons with your hands? Before we start, click the subscribe button now to make the most of this useful body feature. Third eyelid. You might think that you only have two eyelids, but you'd be wrong. We can almost see you sitting there staring resolutely at the screen with your two separate eyes, trying to figure out where the third eyelid could possibly be. Don't worry, we won't leave you hanging any longer. The third eyelid is actually part of your existing eyelid, which means if we're being technical, then you actually have four eyelids after all. These numbers are growing by the second. Your third eyelid is actually called the nictating membrane and is the transparent or translucent layer of the skin that covers part of your eye. If that thought makes you feel a bit uncomfortable, you should consider that it was initially actually there for a good reason, to keep your eyes clean and moisturized. In some animals, it covers the entire eye, but in humans, you'll recognize it as a tiny triangle in the inner corner of your eye. We've adapted so that our third eyelid is now nothing more than for show, because our fully functioning eyelids do all the work for keeping our eyes in good condition nowadays. Maybe in many years time, we'll get rid of these mini third eyelids entirely, and we'll be left with just our full lids instead. Tonsils. Everyone had that only sickly kid in their class at school who always got ill. They'd have days off more frequently than you'd sharpen your pencil, and you'd pretty much forgotten their name by the end of the year. When they returned for the hundredth time, they had their tonsils removed and the rest of the class stood around in awe. Back when you were a kid, you might have wondered just how this mysterious tonsil was removed and what sort of danger your friend would be in as a result. Now that you're older, you probably know loads of people with their tonsils removed. Luckily, the procedure is completely safe and humans don't actually need tonsils to survive at all. Some people think they actually encourage illness like strep throat and tonsillitis. No one is sure why we still have tonsils in this day and age, because we're not sure what benefits they actually bring. It's thought that the reason they're still in our throats is because now, instead of taking them out, we just take antibiotics to heal them again. It's a double-edged sword, really, because we don't want to be in pain, but maybe if we just left those darn tonsils alone, they'd disappear on their own eventually. Coccyx. Some of these body parts might seem completely ridiculous to you, and we might even wonder if these evolution stories are nothing but myths. But if there's one body part that really and truly shows us that evolution is real, then it's the coccyx, or tailbone. Based at the bottom of your back, it's that small lump that used to be your tail. That's right, back thousands of years ago, before humans were humans, we would have had a tail, or at least more of a tail than we have now, which for most of us isn't much. Tails were used in this form for balancing and assisting with picking things up, and now our nicely fully formed hands do the job for us. Isn't evolution a great thing? The coccyx seems like it used to be a good idea, but now it's usually more trouble than it's worth. People who suffer from a bad lower back can usually find that their coccyx is at the root of the problem, but sadly, there's nothing really that can be done about it, short of removing the tailbone, which would most likely leave you wheelchair bound. It's just another body feature we'll have to get used to having for the next few hundred years. Pinky toes. We owe a lot to our toes, and possibly a lot more than we first realized. You might have heard things about dancers' toes, and that if your second toe is longer than your big toe, it means you'd be a good ballet dancer. If you didn't know that fact, then we bet you're definitely peeling off your socks now to have a look. And we all know that our big toe is used for balance. It's a difficult thing to check without actually cutting off your toe in the first place, so we'll just assume that that one is correct for the time being. When it comes to our other three toes, we'll admit we're not too clued up on what the benefits are. But we know one thing for sure, it's that your pinky toe is pretty much good for nothing. If you were to lose it, it'd probably hurt quite a bit, but it wouldn't affect your balance or ability to walk, and would also mean that painting your toenails took a slightly shorter chunk of your time. Pinky toes have stayed with us through evolution, and we don't see them disappearing anytime soon, but who knows where they'll be in a thousand years' time. Wisdom Teeth Growing up, you likely got used to various teeth falling out. It was all part and parcel of becoming a teenager. Although once the fascination of the tooth fairy disappeared, it seemed like more of a chore to lose a tooth than anything else. Nowadays, it's nothing but a fear, because we know we don't have another set of teeth conveniently waiting to burst through. Although if you're in the small percentage of people who have wisdom teeth, 
then you might experience that strange sensation all over again. Wisdom teeth were great back in the olden days when our ancestors had to pick apart tough meat and use their teeth to get them through each and every day. However, over the years, the rise of cooked meat has meant our jaws have slowly got smaller and require less teeth to munch away through our dinner. This has left some people in the unfortunate position of having teeth of their ancestors, but the jaw structure of today's generation which means those extra teeth have to sit somewhere. Wisdom teeth grow, and we don't need the new teeth to push through the surface, but they definitely try their luck at it anyway. Ouch. Spare ribs. They might just sound like a tasty snack you'd have at a barbecue restaurant, but they're not the spare ribs we're talking about at this time. In fact, the spare ribs we're mentioning in this video are super rare in comparison to the food type, and that's because only 5% of people actually have spare ribs. By now, you're probably wondering how many ribs we have in the first place. Most humans have 12 sets, which equals 24 ribs, but a small percentage of people have an extra pair right at the top. There's not much of a benefit that comes from having a pair of spare ribs. Some people even find it causes them pain. Ribs are a great help to your body as they protect your vital organs, which is why it always makes the news when a model decides to remove a few set for a smaller waist. The set of extra ribs doesn't grow for fun or as some kind of mutated gene. It actually comes from evolution. All chimps and gorillas have an extra pair of ribs than us, which is likely where we get it from. As we've already said, having an extra set of ribs as a human doesn't mean much, really, because there's not that much else to protect once you've gone past our lungs that isn't already sheltered anyway. Appendix. Most people just think of the appendix as a body part we can easily remove without any further problems. Not to say that these people are wrong, because it's very easy to live a normal life after your appendix has been removed but it can also be very beneficial to your health. The appendix was important to our ancestors for storing good bacteria and helping with digestion, but nowadays our bodies have adapted to work perfectly fine without it. It's one of the many areas in your intestines that has a very high concentration of immunity-helping cells called GALT, and while this may sound great for keeping you healthy, its position means it's liable to get infected frequently, which is why so many people have problems with their appendix and end up getting it removed. So by now, you're probably wondering why we still have one at all. And the reason primarily is because it's useful in early life. It begins to grow in the fifth fetal week and is at its largest size during your childhood. As you age, your appendix loses size, and that's if you haven't already had it removed by then. Normally, it's between 5 to 10 centimeters in length. Spleen. Your spleen is a small, fist-sized organ that lives under the left side of your rib cage near the stomach. It's important for keeping your immunity up, but it's also very easy to survive without a spleen. Its main function is to provide special white blood cells that destroy bacteria and help fight infection. But even if your spleen is removed, the rest of your body will fight hard to keep your immunity in peak position instead. Some people are lucky and actually have two spleens, which means you might be able to stay healthier than most. These people are extra lucky because if they have to have their spleen removed, they have a second, smaller one to pick up the job. An interesting fact about the spleen is that it doesn't grow back. Unlike other organs like your liver, if you cut away part of the spleen, you'll be left with the remaining part. It won't regenerate. This is a key factor as to why we're so sure it's not really an important body feature. It can actually also cause you damage, because if you injure your spleen in a car accident or something similar, then it can rupture and cause life-threatening internal bleeding. So perhaps those who have already lost their spleen are on their way to being the healthiest around after all. Erector pili. Picture this scene. You're watching a scary movie and something jumps out at you. Along with screaming, you realize that all of the hairs on your body have suddenly stuck up. Why is this? You're not cold. What else could be causing it? You may just know of them as the hairs on your arms, but their medical name is the erector pili muscles. They're an evolutionary trait that for some reason hasn't disappeared in humans. At the end of each hair follicle is a tiny muscle, which collectively forms the erector pili. Whenever we're scared or stressed or cold, the muscles contract and the hairs stand up. It's a strange thing to happen to humans because we don't use the benefits anymore. Back in olden times, the hairs would stand up to make us appear larger. This would scare off potential predators and make us look more impressive. Nowadays, however, you probably don't need to physically scare anyone off, and if you did, you probably wouldn't think of your arm hairs to do the job first thing. Most mammals have the same reactive muscles, and you'll still see it most obviously in cats and dogs when they're trying to scare another animal off. A kidney. It's perfectly possible to function with only one kidney, although you do have to be more careful during everyday life. Some people have a kidney removed from infection or illness, and others choose to donate a kidney to help someone else out. Thousands of people each year make the decision to donate a kidney to a friend or relative, but there's another group of people entirely who are actually born with only one kidney in the first place, a condition called renal agenesis. 
It's thought that the condition affects around 1 in 750 people. The kidneys are used to clear waste from the body, so if one stops working or is removed, the other can just carry out the extra workload. It's not ideal, but many people do it and have no problems in later life. People who do live with a single kidney do have to have various medical checks and are encouraged to look after themselves properly. Occasionally, those who don't have two working kidneys find they suffer slight problems in later life, but this is usually more than 25 years after the kidney is removed. We're not too surprised, because we'd think we'd get pretty tired tackling a double workload after a long period of time, too. We bet after watching this video, you'll view your body in a whole new light, and you'll definitely be conscious of those tiny hairs next time you watch a horror film. We hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Thanks!